So in this lesson, we are speaking about the, the atomic theory. How did the, how did the atomic theory develop? We said yesterday that the first man <clears throat> to speak about the atom was the Greek philosopher Democritus, and he named the atom Adamus. What is the meaning of Adamus? Adamus means uncut, uncut, okay? He named it Adamus or uncuttable because he said, if you try to cut a piece of iron until you reach a small piece, then you cut it again, you will get to the smallest particle that you will not be able to cut it anymore. So the smallest piece, the basic particle that you cannot cut it anymore, he called it Adamus, then we named it Adam in English. So Democritus only said that there is a small particle or the basic particle of any substance is called Adamus or uncannable, then we called it Adam in English. After Democritus, we said that John Dalton said that the atoms are hard, smooth balls that are solid. Nothing inside them, something like those. So I need you to hang on. Summarize what we will say today. Summarize what we will say today. We started with uh, Democritus. What did Democritus say? He said that, or he named it Adamus. Adamus. Or uncuttable. Okay. And then we named it Adam, the smallest particle, or the basic particle of any substance. Then comes the scientist John Dalton that said that please take out your copies and write this, this summary with me. Dalton said that the atoms look like Smooth, hard, hard balls. Don't write right now, but prepare your copy. When we finish, I'll let you uh, write the summary. Then the scientist J.J. Thompson discovered that doc. He said that. Hang on a second. J.J. Thompson said that the atom has negative particles that he called electrons, and there are positive particles that are spread all around the atom. He said that the atom must also contain some sort of positive charge. Who is this? This was J.J. Thompson. So the next scientist we should write is J.J. Thompson. He said that, 
<laughs> the atom contains, let's write two branches, atoms contain negative torsion electrons. So he discovered the electrons. And he also said atoms contain positive charge. Okay, this was Thompson's discovery. Then we said Rutherford, Rutherford, let us see what did Rutherford do. Ernest Rutherford found an evidence that challenged Thompson's model. Rutherford said that, here is it, he aimed at the of positively charged particles at thin sheet of gold foil. He used the positively charged beams on the gold foil. So the gold foil is made of atoms. And look, this is the gold foil. He moved the positive beams on it. And he found that some of the beams are distracted and the others moved straight. From this, he said that when Thompson said that the atom has positive charges all around the atom, this was a mistake, this was a mistake. He said that the positive charges are concentrated in the nucleus. So who discovered the nucleus? It was rather, it was rather. He discovered that, he discovered the nucleus that contains all the positively charged particles. Okay. Here we go. So hang in a second. What did Rutherford say? Let us see. He said that actually all of this, we explained all of this yesterday. He said that atoms positive charge must be packed within a small region in the center called nucleus. So he discovered the nucleus. He said that the nucleus is a small region in the center of the atom. He said that nucleus is the dense center of the atom. Boys, you are following me, right? We are revising yesterday's yes, explanation. So we spoke about Democrit Democritus. We said that Dalton said these are smooth, hard balls. Then J.J. Thompson discovered the electrons and he, he said that there are positively charged particles. Then the last one we spoke about yesterday was, was Rutherford that said there is a nucleus that contains all the nutrients. He said nucleus is the dense center of the atom. And he said that uh, the positive charge, positive charge, protons. Uh, that, uh, mean uh, that the nucleus is the smallest thing. Not yes, that. but you know, the nucleus is not the smallest thing. Actually, the electrons are the smallest thing. Look at this, but hang in a second. 
Yes, because I, electrons uh, may be in nucleus. Uh, uh, electrons are smaller than nucleus, but actually this is a, a very good question. What you, what's your name? Who asked? Who is speaking? Ahmed? Yes. Look, yeah, yeah. Ahmed and Ala also, I think. The I'm electrons sure. are smaller than nucleus, right? Yes, yes. Smaller like, than nucleus. Right? Uh, yes, yes. The electrons are smaller than the nucleus, okay? And the nucleus yes. is smaller than the, the atom, right? Yes. Yeah. So why didn't we say that the electrons are the basic part? Ah, 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 Mister. Yes. Because uh, uh, not uh, not everything contains electrons. No, no, actually, no, sir, everything no, contains electrons, write. but not, but right. the electron, no, we didn't say that the atom is the smallest particle or the basic particle, and uh, we stopped. No, we said something else. Look at this. The atom, hang on a second. I need to erase this. Why is it erased? Yeah. Hang on a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mr. Because the atom is one unit yes. or... He said that, he said that... So it is the smallest unit. Yes, it is the smallest unit. Unit, together, it is a unit. Like what, look, the atom, the atom is the smallest part. In that but one, it is not the smallest thing still, in the world. That is still can be considered as an element. What is the meaning of this? Look at this. The smallest particle of hydrogen is hydrogen atom. Okay, what is the shape of the hydrogen atom? I know that the hydrogen has one proton in the center of it. Also, there is something else we will speak about, one neutron. These are contained in the nucleus. And around the nucleus, there is one electron. Okay, Mister. So the smallest yeah. particle of hydrogen is electron. Okay, magic. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But look at this. That carbon has six protons. Carbon six. Uh, hydrogen one. Carbon six. The carbon has. Look, I draw the same problem. The carbon has six protons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six neutrons. One, two, three. And the electrons that are spinning around the nucleus, the carbon also has six electrons. Mister, so this is a large particle. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mister, so now the carbon atom is a large particle. It is not the smallest. The electron is the smallest. You confirm the what we the said. The, the hydrogen is a large particle. The electron is the smallest. Yes, great, but continue. But when I show you the atom, okay. just listen to me one second. When I show you the atom that contains six protons, six electrons, you can tell me it is carbon, right? Yes. Yeah. When I show you a hydrogen, or when I show you a, an atom that contains one proton, one neutron, one electron, you can tell me it is hydrogen, right? Yes. yes. But if I showed you an electron, can you tell me that this electron came from which element? Did it came no. from hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, or anything else? When I show you one proton, can you tell me this proton came from hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen? No. But if I draw this, if I draw this one proton, one neutron, one electron, can you tell me what is this? Atom. Atom uh, of what? Atom. Hydrogen, carbon, or nitrogen? Hydrogen. One uh, proton, uh, one neutron, one electron. Ah, yes, Mr. You, I know it is hydrogen. So now the atom is the smallest unit that you can use it to tell me the element, right? Yes. 
but the smallest unit as at all is the electron. But you can't use the electron if I showed you an electron. If this electron came from hydrogen, nitrogen, or carbon, I don't know. We can't it. know. We can't know. So do you understand it now? Yeah. Yes. But the, the atom is not the smallest thing. Yes. Yeah. But it's the smallest thing that can be considered an atom. Is... Thank you. Mister. So, uh, so uh, there is something that's smallest than uh, the electrons? No, electron is the smallest. No. Thanks, Mister. Great. So, good question, boys. So, as we said, Rutherford said that the positive particles in the nucleus are called protons. This is the last thing we said. Let's write it down. So Rutherford said that protons are, hang on a second, protons are positive particles in nucleus. So please write those four scientists down. Write this in your copy, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Ah. Ah. Write this in your copy. I finish. Okay, wait for your. Mister, I finish. Very good. I finish. Yes, I'm not speaking. I'm just waiting for your friends to finish. Ah, uh, anybody didn't finish? Mister, I didn't finish. Okay, take your time, take your time.
Ah, did you all finish? No, Mr. Ayman. So we stopped at this port when Rutherford discovered the protons and he said that the protons are found in the nucleus. Now to the Bohr model, look, Rutherford said that the electrons are spinning in all around the nucleus like this, but Bohr arranged the electrons. He said that the electrons will not move randomly around the nucleus. He said that the electrons are found only in specific orbits, like the sun in the middle, like the sun in the middle, and the planets are spinning around the sun in a specific orbits. Some planets are close from the sun, others are far from the sun. Also, the electrons, the electrons are found only in a specific orbits. So let's add Bohr and write it if you can. He said that electrons, electrons are found electrons are found in specific orbits. This means that the electrons move around the nucleus in a specific orbits. Like this. Write it down, please. So again, as we said, the cloud model, they said that electrons move rapidly within a cloud region with a, a cloud, hang on, a, a cloud region around the nucleus, around nucleus. Sir. Yes. 